Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another edition of our weekly real estate backstory. We do this every Monday morning. We kind of bring you the comings, the goings, all the things happening in the uh, magical world of real estate. My name is Alan Richardson. Magical world. Magical. Huh? Yes, yes. I'm the managing broker here at Maximum One. And my name is mm -hmm. Ming Richardson. I'm the compliance broker for Maximum One Realty and Realtor Partners. All right. And we want to jump in. We know it's political season and we're not trying to be political. As a matter of fact, we're not being political. However, uh, we want to bring you the data. Well, and and we're not going to be political. We don't recommend you being political. But you know who is political is our buyers and sellers. Correct. And so right now, th there's a new study came out that says 60% of prospective buyers say the upcoming election is influencing their plans. Correct. About a third of folks say they're planning to wait until the race is final. I don't know why. It doesn't seem to make any sense. But... Two things, two points to make. One, don't wait around for folks, right? Uh, just because some folks are feeling like, 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 because every time that there's an election, we you know, we see this thing go on where people get super political and it just kind of like becomes the end all be all to their entire world. Don't be that way. Um, yes, the presidential election, presidential election is an important time in our country. However, you still need to be out buying and helping folks buy and sell real estate. There's a lot of really important things. That's the path to home, I mean, to wealth in the United States. So yeah, is it is it something that, that, that definitely is gonna, like, like all the robocalls, all those kind of things in our world? Sure. Do we need to be like the voice of reason during this time? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, for the folks who are waiting, you need to reach out now. For the folks who aren't waiting, guess what you need to do? reach out now. We need to be talking about what's, what's super important. Um, you know, as far as like moving forward, um, right now, overall for the election, the second most important issue that Americans are saying is that housing affordability is a big deal. So what kind of property should we be sharing? Affordable housing, you know, affordable housing options, you know, some of the townhomes or that our lesser, builders are offering or lesser down payment yeah. options. And there are some mm -hmm. folks that are offering incredibly low price uh, with VA funding right now. So uh, please inquire with your lender and ask them what is there. And there are also internal grants that may be available through, with conventional loans. So please have a chat with your lender yeah. and make sure that those opportunity to offer to your clients as well. Well, and, and a lot of folks get wrapped up in just trying to talk about politics when instead you know, like, like let's, yeah, let's say let's the, what's what really you, important, well, right? Let's talk about what you can do today to build your wealth. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what politics is doing to a certain extent. Uh, you still got to take care of your four walls and you need to build your wealth for you and your family. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, so there, there's a new study out there and it says, what is the top five metros in the United States for college degree professionals? And Atlanta is one of the top five Yay. metros. That's a really good thing for us because these are our, our future business leaders. These right. are movers and shakers. The, you know, these folks moving into our into our area. That's a very positive sign. Uh, you know that that you know, and, and it's based on a lot of different things: wages, hiring, affordability. Atlanta is a really solid market for that. So we're in a really good place. Absolutely, feel really strong about that. All right. So inflation numbers came out and they're looking better. I know overall, a lot of Americans are not feeling that way. And that's because we had inflation for the last few years. That was, that was a lot higher. And so the reality of it is it's never, we're never going to have de-inflation, right? It's not going to go back to where it was, but the inflation right now is at a much more manageable rate, right around two and a half percent. So we're getting closer. Uh, the Fed met this past Wednesday. And, you know, we're still sitting at a really high federal funds rate right now. Um, yeah. It hasn't moved. And everyone was like, are they going to do it? Are they going to do it? Are they going to do it? Nope. nope. Uh, not yet. It's really kind of, kind of the, what came out. Uh, Fed, you know, uh, Chair Powell said that, you know, rate cuts are coming. We know that they're going to be coming. A lot of folks were hoping it was going to be now. That being said, we're already seeing the lenders start to kind of price in some of these things. So, you know, interest rates are still hovering around 6.7, but they are already starting to go lower. Even like, like you know, th this numbers were from Thursday last week. Already we're seeing them in the, in the low sevens and some in the six sixes and that kind of stuff. So 
it's moving forward. Uh, what we're finding is that a lot of our buyers are continuing to find, uh, be, be very creative. That's a good way right. to put it. Uh, um, and so one of the things that, that we are seeing is the use of adjustable rate mortgages is up. Now, when you look at it overall, it's not up huge. But for this year, it's the highest that it's been for this year. And, and we are seeing a positive trend there. Uh, it's one of those where we're not huge arm fans overall. You know, anyone that, that went through the market crash that we had back in 2007 and 8. It's great you know, for temporary. But, yeah. uh, but it's, it's it, not. It's not a long term solution, right? right? So there are some folks where, however, we're an adjustable rate mortgage really does make sense for their particular business or what's going on or where, they're, well, where they are in their that career. People relocate every other year or so. Yeah. This might be a good opportunity for them. But yeah. for the folks that are not relocating, so. um, that might be a difficulty. Yeah. Right now, the arms are running about a point lower than than, uh, than mm -hmm. standard uh, or, or than, than your traditional rate. But so just remember, whatever you pay, there's nothing toward a principal. So that's the difference between arm and a regular loan. Well, um, that, that's that's on a live board. So, I mean, just where mortgage just means that that the the rate okay. is going to it is live board, but there are some that yeah. yeah yeah there are some of them that that are that way. Not all arms are 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 interest only. Interest only is a piece of it, but it's not just that. We're seeing where sometimes a doctor, a lawyer who's starting mm -hmm. off their practice may get wet. They're going to have a little bit lower rate. They know they're going to refinance down the road. It just may be the right choice for them at All that right. time. So um, now that being said, one thing that we've seen is this, is this holdover rate where folks are like, you know, our interest rates are so low that we just, we don't, we don't see any point in selling. And so where does Georgia fall in on that? We fall in kind of right in the middle, right? Like, like you're going to see the, the states like Texas and, and even um, New York. They have some of the lowest rates in the country. Georgia's sitting kind of right in the middle, right? Like we don't have uh, a lot of our borrowers don't have the highest rate. They also don't have the lowest rate. Right. So, you know, we are starting to see some good inventory movement on as far as all that's going on there. One thing I do want to caution you, you may have it, you may have heard recently a subject to contracts. Be very careful with those because those do come with some liabilities. Mm -hmm. While the investor try to make it sound pretty, it really isn't unless you educate your seller what that subject to means. Yep. So US pending home sales went up by five percent for the first time in three months. We're yeah. seeing a positive trend in the number of sales and grant some of this is seasonal we know that always the summer is a good month but it's just great to see positive numbers we, we've had some pretty depressed just in the volume uh what's going on in the sales fat, right. you know and, and so seeing that volume pick up we're actually looking at as interest rates come down i think it's going to be a very very strong fall for us um when on, interest on that rate piece. comes down well, I mean, but I mean, we're so close to six and a half right now. We get down to six and a half, it, it start. You know, the game changes here a little bit. So nine and a half is when we we all go. Oh well, once we, we once we get into low sixes, and yeah. below six, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's Katie bar the door, but then we also worry that at that point, what's going to happen to prices? They're going up. Yeah. So um, right now, what we're seeing is that um, inventory is increasing. And when you get a higher inventory growth, it is making for a more affordable market. And so you can see that that we're at, you know, we're, we're overall the Atlanta area kind of falls in. What we're we're into that the, where the areas that have the highest level of inventory are seeing much more modest or 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 even lowering values. Uh, and so. Uh, in some, in, so th there's a new national headline out here that says home prices fell in July for the first time. And it's good news, shows the market is healing. And, and so they're all touting that home prices are falling. And I'm not saying that that's not true. What I'm saying is it's location specific. Remember when we talked about last week about 26% of seller are, you know, reducing their price. So that is part of the equation on that. Yeah. But what, what, where we're going with is, like, like if you look at this map, you're going to see that, yeah, there's, there's lots of Washington, Idaho, Texas, Florida. Uh, 
have areas in the red, in the pink, and those are areas that are in a decline or, or where property values have been dropping and Correct. declining. What, what do you notice? But Georgia, Ming, Party we're, we're, we're primarily in the blue, right? Yeah. Or, or, or it's a growth rate less than less than 3%. Um, <clears throat> so it's, yeah, I'm not saying that those national numbers are wrong because they're not, right? We're seeing that on, overall nationwide for it's the first time, average, it, it, yeah. you know, but that doesn't mean that that's necessarily what's happening in Georgia. Now we are seeing prices moderate. Inventory is definitely impacting what's happening in our market right now. We're, right. we're not seeing the big double digit property value appreciation. We feel it's going to be somewhere in that, what, two to 4% range right. roughly. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we don't see a declining market here in Georgia. We've got so many great things going on for us. You know, a, a big population moving in. We have a young generation that, that's that's all becoming first time home buyers. Um, you know, we just have a lot of really great things happening in the Atlanta market. We don't see this in any kind of real devaluation. We see a, a market where the pricing is slowing, but activity that the activity one is going to be one that, that, that's really a kicker here because right. if we see interest rates go. That's where pricing is going to be a little bit. We're going to cray cray. Is that a good word? We're going to see where it goes. So, but we wanted you to see what else is happening with the data points, right? Because everyone gets all up in their emotions and they're like, this is what's really going. Now let, let's look at what's really happening. So what, what's crazy is look at what's happening with days on market. Even though we've seen rising inventory, we're not seeing in days on market shoot through the roof. Well, and that's because some of the listing agents are consulting their seller, yeah. uh, the seller agent, uh, about what the market's doing. And smart seller that wants mm -hmm. to move and is motivated to move, uh, meaning they're not giving away the farm, but at, but as they're also pricing the property where it should be yeah. um, a good value. Well, and, and part of this, let's just be honest, is seasonal. It but. Is. But, you know, you know, we've been hearing already where, where there's talking heads saying, well, this inventory, we're going to see prices. Rah, 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 rah. Look, days on market are still going down. They're not going up. Um, how about this? The number of offers received per sale is not necessarily. I mean, it's fairly what I call flat, right? Correct. Uh, it, it, it's it's moving a little bit. It went down earlier this year. It's, it's trending back up. So, like, there's still folks buying properties you know like like that that's what, that's what's kind of going on um you know the average holds home sold in june had 2.9 offers slightly up from 2.8 in may so you know there's still a lot of activity going on right now don't you know like, like that's the other thing don't don't be swayed by how you know things are feeling and that kind of stuff look at what's really happening with the data so even though we're seeing inventory increase we're seeing uh, days on market still holding steady. What's happening with um, list price? Like, like we still have roughly about thirty percent of our properties are being sold at or above list price. Correct. And and that's where we're getting this this weird double market. On one hand, we have homes that are selling quickly, good homes in good areas. How fast are they selling? Yeah, well, like, like, price in right. two weeks, right? It, it really goes. Yep. Yeah. And then for the folks who are like. I want to push the top of the market. I want to sit and, there. Or you have a lot of deferred maintenance. Yeah. And, and, and thinking that I don't need to make repairs. I only want cash offers for those sellers who are, who are kind of out of touch. And, and, and let's be honest, agents who were, who weren't honest about this is what's really happening in the market. They just wanted to buy that listing. Uh -huh. These kind of things. That, that's why we have on one hand, properties selling quickly. And at the same time, a lot of properties taking price reductions, having high days on market, expiring out all at the same exact time. So it's, it's kind of a, it's a little bit different, right? It is a lot different. Yeah. So overall, we're seeing new listings for homes are still increasing, but man, they are increasing at a much Very less. Minimal. Yeah. Yeah. New listings of home. We were looking at new listing homes being up in the double digits in the 20s and 30% up. Now it's much more moderated. We're seeing where that's kind of tapering off. Some of that seasonal, right? You know, we're, we're, we're about to come out of, out of the summer. And so overall, nationwide, active listings for homes is up 19% year over year. And so we've kind of seen that same thing going on. Um, now in Georgia, it's a little bit different, right? And so this is our change in, in active housing inventory between 
June 2023 and June 2024, overall total inventory is up over 50% in Georgia. And so on one hand, you can say, well, that's going to that's gonna lead to, to, to price, the, reduction. price reductions, that kind of stuff. But, you know, we're not seeing price reductions. We're not seeing prices drop. Um, we're, we're seeing where we're still moving into a, a more balanced market, even though it's up over last year we're still down about 30% from the total number of listings that we had pre-COVID. Right. I know it's hard to believe we, we, we still talk about pre-COVID. Uh, one other thing that, that, that is kind of interesting is even though we're seeing inventory move around, all these kind of things, the average U.S. home ownership, the tenure, how long our folks live in a home before they move it, man, it's moved so little. It's somewhere in that seven to eight year range is kind of what we're running right now. So well, right now, everybody's got great interest rates. So for the one that they bought yeah. during the pandemic, they're going to keep their home a little longer yeah. unless they're required to move uh, to a different state or having yeah. some type of dynamic change. Yep, exactly. <laughs> All right. So anytime that, that, that we see inventory what move. Closures? Oh, man. They, I'm so, I, I love y'all. But but y'all y'all hit me up and hammer me all. When are the foreclosures coming? Are we going to see foreclosures? Are what's happening with foreclosures? So right now we're still seeing equity is up. Equity up is up huge. As a matter of fact, the number of properties that are equity rich, meaning they, they have over fifty percent equity, is con, has been continuing to grow and grow and grow. At the same time, underwater homeowners, the seriously delinquent people. That went from 2.7 to 2.4 percent. So we're not you know, like like no one wants to be homeless right so, now. So what we're seeing right now too is some of your industrial uh, seller or investors they are they are actually started slowly liquidating some of their um, properties. Yeah. So they're cashing out. Yeah, they're cashing out. They're they're basically having sent a bank invested in other. Um, avenues and mm -hmm. when the market is right again they will go after the market like they did yeah. but we're not seeing underwater homeowners right i mean and, and you know we are there's always going to be some folks that, that that unfortunately have financial issues they have deaths jobs in the family or mm -hmm. job losses those kind of things uh divorces and, and that that will cause people to, to need change. to sell. Yeah. Um, but what we're not seeing is this big foreclosure wave. There's no reason for it because, honestly, I, I mean, do you know anyone that's upside down? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, yeah, I, I don't know, right I don't know anyone. Yeah. And I, and I think most of y'all don't know anybody that's upside Even down. Even people that are unable to afford pay their current home now, they've got equity. Still have equity. So if they they wanted to, they can sell. And yeah. nine out of ten, I can tell you. On the average, minimum, if you bought more than three years ago, uh, fifty thousand dollars in equity. Yeah. So or more. Yeah. So we're just not kind of seeing that go on. All right, we're gonna we're gonna switch over and talk about investors because overall, investor purchases, like Ming said, are actually down. Investors, mm -hmm. you know, we have our industrial investors that, that have been selling awesome stuff, and overall, inv investor purchases are down, and that's great because investor purchases tends to buy entry level, entry price, you know, our starter homes, those kind of things tend to be what they would gobble up. I'm glad that they're not nearly as active well, in that, the market. That's also an indication that the market's not right for investment. Well, it is right for a first time home buyer who actually can afford an entry price, uh, price point home. Well, a lot of those guys are, are dealing with, with the stock market, what's mm -hmm. happening on there and the commercial sides. And so there's, there's so many different avenues, but residential real estate, not so much. So um, Zonda went out and they ranked the top 50 largest housing markets for single family new construction. And Atlanta comes in at number six in the nation. This is a really important thing that, that we want to make sure that everyone realizes that new construction, you know, this is our hidden inventory. Like, like we hear all the time, like, like, oh, I'm looking for all, all those off market deals. Go to new construction, right? So many of these new construction properties are not on the market. You have, if you're going to work new construction, you got to go old school. You got to go out and you got to meet the on site agents. You got to go have meet a the conversation, folks. Yeah. Build a relationship. Yeah. But also understand every new construction have their, um, well, they have their own set of contracts, you know? So therefore, Understand those contracts, what are the pitfalls, if any, 
and also what are some of the protection period for your client? Yeah. Well, and like, are you going to use the on-site, the, the, the lender's lender? I mean, the builder's, the builder's lender. lender. Yeah, if I could say it right. The, the builder's lender. Are you going to use the builder's lender? Typically, there's incentive in, in, in that just because the builder's lender are incentivizing the builder with something that make up the difference. So, but if you don't, your earnest money may, may not be safe. You may not get upgrades. You may not get closing costs. So in the vast majority of times, yeah, you're going to use the builder's lender. Are you going to use the builder's closing attorney? Yeah. Yeah, because if you don't like it, they're not going to mm-hmm. sell the house to you. Are, are you going to take the builder's 210 warranty? Yeah, because if not, they're going to sell the house to you. There's a lot of things like that in new construction. Are they going to let you show up for the final walkthrough inspection? Uh, some Mo. of them. Some do. No. Some no. So it, they, you got to do it the day before. Not, yeah, so they will allow your buyer to do a pre a walkthrough, and the only time you can do it is the day of closing. So by then, guess what? So you you gotta t- you gotta meet with your with your buyers ahead of time kind mm-hmm. of thing and educate them. Yeah, you, you still want to be advising them that you know we are going to 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 get a home inspection. These are smart things for us to do. I'm here to protect you, but you know the biggest thing here is that a lot of agents just don't realize how much inventory really is out there. Um, you know, like like these are the top ten builders in the Atlanta market. So we got Dr. Horton. Ashton Woods is actually the second largest builder mm-hmm. in 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 Georgia, really. Lennar comes in at three, then Pulte Group, Century, Meritage, Smith Douglas, DRB, Dan Ryan Builders, and then we got Green Brick, uh, which is that Century. Oh, they, I'm sorry, they, they, you know, some of them, these are their publicly traded names and that kind of stuff. And then Toll Brothers, most of their stuff is, is, is up on, on the north side. But these are the biggest builders. And... If you're looking for inventory, you're going to have to go to the builder site. You're going to have to go look up what neighborhoods they have listed. And you want to go out and meet the on-site agents. The only place where you're going to find a deal in new construction is standing inventory. Absolutely. You know, Usually those are have more incentive, more closing costs, uh, and better interest rate. Yeah. And when you go there, you're going to find out things like, like she just mentioned, you know, I mean, was talking about interest rate, but like, we have our agents come in all the time. Hey, I was just in this neighborhood and they're 4. offering 4.99. They're offering five and a quarter. They're from 4.75, uh-huh. uh, even, you know, fives and, and all that kind of stuff. But how do you find that out? Have a conversation. You got to go meet these folks. That's and right. so these are the folks that you need to go be talking to. Do your here. due diligence. So when your client does come and inquire with you about new construction, you can say, oh, this, 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 this. And so you allow the buyer to make their own decision on what is affordable and what is palatable for their family. Yep. So don't forget that we got the Metro South Association of Realtors trade show coming up on September 5th. We also have in all of our offices, Tom, Tom Ferry. Ferry. So. And so please go to Tom Ferry. You, all you got to do is maxone.rock slash Tom Ferry. It is August 27th, 28th, 29th. Please sign up for all three days. Okay. And that's what I was going to say. A lot of agents sign up for mm-hmm. first day thinking they're automatically signed up for the second and third day. That is not true. So please sign up for all three events so we can get an accurate hit count. For that way, food that, that, way, that way you don't go hungry. You. Right. Like if you don't sign up and show up, then then we, we're all just going to like, like, We'll share we don't that. have that. I mean, <laughs> we just can't do loaves and fishes that way. So give us a little bit, little bit of heads up here. Work yeah. with us. So it's a great event. We we really hope that, that you take advantage of this because, like like you get breakfast, lunch, you get six hours of CE taken care of. We we really do try and make it just a great event across the Absolutely. board. So please, we we, we hope you join us. Now next week we also have we're st- we're still doing our twenty five hour post license class. Uh, Monday we're going to be doing working with buyers. Or I'll, Ultimate Buyer System is going to be on Monday. It's going to be here. Wednesday, we're doing Ultimate Listing, and we're going to be talking about sellers and those kind of things. That's also going to be in the McDonough office. Thursday, Guard Contract Mid-Year Changes, and that's going to be over in our Noonan office. Please yeah. sign up for that. It's our smallest office. you got to make sure you get signed up because these are really popular classes right now. And I can tell you, we, we teach you what the form means and what is the best practice. Yep. And then Ming turns around and teaches again on Friday here. Take me to closing. Show me the money. Yeah. Uh, well, that's good for you. <laughs> so, 
uh, we'll be seeing you this week, uh, this week. Yeah. So we hope that you guys have a great week. If we can be of any kind of service, please call, text, smoke signals. We don't care. We, we, we do it all. So bye, y'all. Thank you, and have Love a you. Monday. Thanks. Bye.